and welcome to my channel. Today I didn't really know what to do but I wanted to film something. So I figured we'd do another look with the Giant Wolves palette by uh, Annette's Makeup Corner and Uden's Eye. I did do one look with this palette in my first review of the three collaboration palettes that were made. And I did promise another three looks, one palette video. I did do a couple of looks off camera, but it didn't happen <laughs> to do three looks. Um, but I did want to do another look today. So it's just going to be a shop my stash and a look with the Giant Wolves palette. So if you're interested in that, then please keep watching. First, I want to thank you so much for clicking on my video. My name is Cecile, I'm 28 years old. I live in the Netherlands and I upload three times a week with makeup related content. So if you think that sounds good, then please consider subscribing. And with all that said, let's get into the video. to change it up a little bit and I want to use my ABH eyeshadow primer which used to be my favorite. The mattes from Uden's Eye are very pigmented which is a good thing of course but it does mean that they're a little bit more tricky to blend out especially on top of tacky bases. So I'll zoom you in so we can do the eyeshadow together. So for those of you who haven't seen it this is what the palette looks like. I really love all of these shades. I think I want to focus on the greens for today. So I'm just going to keep it fairly simple and do a look with only the greens, I think. So I'm first going into Antipode, which is this olive green. And I'm taking my blending brush by Essence. And I'm going to see if I can keep my eyeshadow a little bit lower and a little bit more elongated. I like that look. It's just sometimes I go a li little bit overboard <laughs> and it doesn't end up happening. I really need some finer blending brushes, some smaller ones. Yeah, that works. I'm also taking this in the outer corner. So I did use this palette a couple of times off camera, like I said, and I did notice that you get a very intense eye look very quickly every time. Maybe that's just the way I apply eyeshadow, but it's also that there are a lot of dark shades. And I really like that. I just have to be a little bit careful not to go too crazy with it. I think this is good. This is perfect. I usually take it all the way up here because I just la 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 la. But then I kind of like this shape better, especially once the lower lash line is done. But maybe I'll just take a little bit more. Just so that it is visible when I have my eyes open. Yes, that's good. I'm just going to take the same brush and also run this through my lower lash line. If it gets a little bit too low, that's okay. I'm going to clean my under eyes anyway. All right, that's nice. I do kind of feel the need to deepen this up a little bit. And I wanna see how far I can get by using the desolate shade. That's this one. If it doesn't work, I'm going to use the black, but I wanna give it a try. No, I don't think that really does anything. I'm going to go into the black. Just a little bit here in the outer corner. Blending it a little bit into the crease, but not too far. Also taking it on the outer corner of the lower lash line. I'm really just using a very tiny bit. Now I'm cleaning up my brush and I'm just going to blend the edges a little bit. Make sure the green and the black are nicely blended. Yes, that's better. I'm going to clean up this edge 
in a little bit. Now I'm taking a flat shader brush and I'm going into the shade Flare, which is this beautiful green. This truly is a very metallic shade. It is a little bit crumbly. But it's so pretty. <laughs> And I'm also going to take that on the lower lash line. There is a lot of fallout. It even fell on my sweater and I am wearing a white sweater. So be careful with that. <laughs> I'm cleaning up my brush and now I'm going into the shade Astral, which is a white with a, a gold reflex, I would say. And I'm going to put that on the most inner part of the lid and the inner corner. And I think that this is all I'm going to do for eyeshadow. I like this, it's easy. It sort of matches my eye color. My own eyes are a little bit less olive and a little bit more blue green or forest green, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> so let me clean this mess up and then I'll get right back. Wait, before I get back, let me finish with mascara and everything. I have this nice dark green eyeliner in the shade Jungle Green by Chanel. It's a little bit more cool tone, but I think it'll work. These Chanel eyeliners are really good and this is before they reformulated. If I understood correctly, these new eyeliners are supposed to be even better. But I haven't tried them out myself, so I can't be sure. That really finishes it. I'm just going in with a black mascara. This is the one by Essence, the Lash Princess. And now I'll clean up my under eyes and then we can go into the face. I'm back, I cleaned up my face and I think this is starting to come together. It's starting to look a lot better. And I'm glad I kept it a little bit more simple this time because the previous times I was using these palettes, I tried to combine a lot of shades and I tried to make a very big and dramatic look, but I think making a shape like this is more than enough drama and i think these shades just match so beautifully together that you really shouldn't mess with it too much at least i like this look a lot better than the one i did before so <laughs> there's just a little backstory to that all right let's go into the face makeup i want to use my hollywood flawless filter again i've been using a lot of dewy foundations lately and then you really don't need to use this. But today I want to use something a little bit more matte, a little bit more full coverage, and then this is beautiful underneath. So what I like to do is just put this on a lot of places on my face, not just the high points. And you have to go back a couple of times because this Doe food wand doesn't distribute a lot of product at the same time. And I'm taking a flat foundation brush or concealer brush and I'm just spreading it all around all over my face. So now I look like a perfect little grease ball. <laughs> I must say, on camera, it doesn't even look that bad. In real life, it's definitely a little bit much. <laughs> so for foundation, I want to go in with my Chanel foundation, the Le Teint Ultra foundation. I have mine in 10 beige or... Yeah, 10 beige. The Ultra Le Teint, which was the, the follow-up from this foundation, is finally available in Europe, by the way. It took a couple of years. <laughs> I'm not going to repurchase it. I like this one and I have a lot of foundations at the moment. I just tested the new Gucci one, for instance. So I'm not going to pick it up, but I just wanted to let you know that it is available now. They also reformulated the concealer just a little bit, but there's not supposed to be a, a big difference. They did add new shades, 
So if your shade wasn't there previously, maybe it is now. I know when my Chanel concealer runs out, I'm probably going to buy the lighter shade that is now available. I really like this combination. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. Maybe my light is still just a little bit too bright. Is it better? I don't know. The daylight isn't the best today. I thought it was okay, but as soon as I started filming, it got a little bit worse again, but I still wanted to film. But I hope you can see, yes, if I do like this, you can see that there is a nice natural sheen coming through my foundation. But I do have this nice velvety texture, which I really love. So I really love the Hollywood Flawless filter, but what else is new? And because I just mentioned it, I want to use my Chanel concealer, even though it's almost finished. I have mine in the shade 10 beige or B10. I'm never, never sure about that. No, this is also 10 beige and I'll use it on its own first so you can see. But it's pretty much the same color as the foundation. Which is nice when I'm a little bit darker. But when I'm my usual pale shade, I kind of like a little bit of brightening. So I always mix this with my white concealer from Makeup Revolution. And these concealers, they work really well together. So there's really no issue. But if I do end up picking a new one, I <laughs> will probably buy the lighter shade that is now available. This is one of the very few fun, uh, concealers that doesn't really crease on me. If I put on too much, it still does. Or if I forget to pat it out before I add my powder. But it's a really, really nice concealer. I'm kind of interested in trying the uh, Revolution concealer on its own in my shade as well. Because if they mix together so nicely, then it's probably not a bad concealer at all. Can't be just a Chanel concealer that's good. Right? <laughs> Alright, so I kind of feel like using a cream bronzer today. So I'm going into my Anastasia Beverly Hills cream bronzer. This is my new favorite. I've been using it quite a lot. I just use a brush with it. And I first apply a sort of thick layer around the edges of my face and then I blend it out when there's less on the brush. blends out perfectly on its own. I am going to use a little bit of powder and the powder I want to use today is an old favorite which is the Givenchy Prisme Libre in the shade number seven Voile Rosé. This is a little bit of a pinky, pinky powder. I just shake a little bit in the cap. Now I have to pat out the concealer just a little bit and then I take a lot of the white in the mixture when I do my under eyes. Because as you can see, I can pretty much pick up on the brush one of those four shades. They come out in quadrants. So I use the white on the high points of my face and underneath my eyes. And then I take a bigger brush and I just mix everything together. And then you get a little bit more of a pinky powder. And that's the one I use to set the rest of my face. So now my face is all set, but there's still just a little bit of that glow visible from everything that is underneath. 
I am going to enhance that just a little bit. I usually would just leave the cream bronzer as is. But I kind of feel like adding just a little bit more today. So I'm going into my uh, Charlotte Tilbury palette. This is the Pretty Blush Beauty palette that she came out with in the springtime. And I'm going into the bronzer. And I'm just going to enhance whatever I laid down with the cream. The colors are very similar, so it works perfectly. And I kind of feel like doing this because it's evening and I have the bold eye. I'm also going into the blush from the same palette because this is one of my favorite blushes. But I really like it with green toned looks. It has this sort of peachy undertone that really matches very well with green eyeshadow. Yes, that's beautiful. And since I have it open and it is easy, I'm also going to take the highlighter from the same palette. Because it does match everything quite perfectly. I'm taking my Dior Pump and brow, brow gel, same as usual. Now we need a lipstick and I kind of want to keep it in this peachy family. So we're going to keep it very Charlotte Tilbury and I'm going into my Angel Alessandra lipstick. This is my go-to lipstick when I want a peachy nude. Perfect. And that's it for the finished look. I'll lean in a little bit. The lighting is almost going down, so we did have to finish up. But I really like this look. I'm a lot more happy with this one than I was with the previous ones. I feel pretty in this one. The other ones were just a little bit too much for me. And a green smoky eye is really my safety. Uh, comfort zone I mean so yeah I really enjoyed this look I hope you did too and I will see you in the next video